Three. Don't want the dabas. I like it. Yabba dabba. Number three. Yabba dabba. Number seven. So all the elements are O to E. So the first one, is it linear or not? Yes. Yes, it's linear. Uh, and then what order? First. So it's the first order, linear, O to E. I like it. So it sounds like a second order black belt on the bottom. Number two, is it linear? No. Just get that out of the way. Uh, what's the order? <coughs> ah. Order deals with derivatives. What's the highest amount of derivatives that were taken? Three. I like it. Four is a power. It didn't have anything to do with the freaking derivatives. That is a third degree nonlinear ODE. Never any true questions. <laughs> Number three, it's a PDE, sure. Is it linear? Yes. 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 And uh, the order? Right. First, I like it. Now, PDEs get a little bit freaky because there could be a lot of mixtures, and we're not really studying PDEs here. This is ODE. This is, so we're not going to do a lot of partial differential equation stuff. But their classification gets a little bit murky sometimes. Uh, number four, is it linear? Yes. Yes, because yes, the only... The, the, the third derivative, second derivative, they're fine. And then 8y, nothing weird happening to the y. Um, uh, order? Third. 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 I like it. And that's an OD. We already identified that. Number five? Second order. Second order. Linear. OD. I like it. Number six? Now, this is, this, now this is, might be a little tricky. But do you see how it's almost like number four? Right? Number six doesn't look like, oh, shit, I don't have one up here. Number six doesn't look like dy dx equals seven. I mean, what's wrong? There's a, watch this. If I put a y here, divide by y, is that linear? No, it's y to negative one. It's not linear. So if any coefficients of the derivative pieces are dependent on y, it's not linear. In fact, it's kind of like, is this linear? This is a silly question. Is x times x linear? No. Is x freaking squared, right? But it's the same kind of idea as y times y prime. Is that linear? <laughs> no. It's kind of like a squared of the thing. I mean, there's, does that make some, now it makes a little more sense when you just solve, solve for your highest uh, order piece. And then if you do that, you're going to get over y somewhere. If you have any coefficients that depend on y. So six is a non-linear third order ODE. Seven PDE second order linear. Sure, because all the U's now, now. This is where things get murky. There's U's and V's, but neither one of them are non-linear. So that's why it gets murky because you have U and V are both independent variables. There, it's, it's a little freaky. Uh, and number eight is the one you had to investigate, but it's a lot like the one we did up here. So in X, is it linear in X? Yes. No. Yeah, so actually, I might have said, told you wrong up there, but I won't put you back. Actually, no, this was, uh, if you divide by dy, and then it was fine with X. See, X is not a coefficient of a dx piece up here, right? But here, X is a coefficient of dx. So when you solve for like dy dx, it's going to have over, oh shit. And how about y? Well, y is obviously automatically, or is it? What happens if you solve for dy dx? You're going to have to divide by the y squared piece. You're going to have a y in the bottom. It's still not linear in y either. So we, <coughs> one thing we still need to talk about is the various forms that give us the most information. So when you study lines... There's various forms of lines. Circles. You complete the square, and then you can see the center and the radius. I mean, there's forms. You can put an equation in that gives you the most information. So we have to, there's several forms that give us a little bit different way to look at something. And one of the basic forms is solve for your highest order piece. Can you show how x is not linear? For number 8? Eight. Eight? Yeah. So do what I just said. T try to solve for dx, dy. Because that would be investigating the X, right? Oops. 
clearly not the end. So then you would divide by the y, and over here you get uh, by negative five y squared over three x y. You know, one of those cancel in pairs. You got something over x that's not linear. I like it. Uh, and number nine, is it linear? Yeah. Everything that has a y in it is linear. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Cosine is definitely not linear. You say, no, they picked a line up, they did this. No, screw it, it's not linear. <laughs> All right, so it's not linear, but it's it's what order? Second, Second order, ODE. I like it. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's see. Oh, I got some time. No way. Blah, 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 blah. So let me, let, me, uh, let me formalize some of these forms I was just talking about. I'll just do a few more things and we'll leave pretty soon, guys. Um, before Lance sticks his head in here and says, get out of here. <coughs> so let me, let me see here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, so if I have a first order... ODE. One of the one of the most basic forms I could put this in Well, let me make sure. First order of linear. So a coefficient that's dependent on x at most times the first order differential. Uh, coefficient that depends on x at most times y, and this could be 0, right? so there might not be any y, equals some function of x. That is a very standard, classic, linear ODE form, right? And this covers every first order linear ODE, right? And you can imagine, if I had a second order linear ODE, it would just add probably a 2x in front of d squared y dx squared plus blah, blah, blah. Same shit. So this is a this is a um, very useful form. And then the next level useful form is to divide by this a one. Is that similar to Taylor's series? Ooh, I like that? it. So you're going to see a lot of uh, uh, not direct similarities, but there are connections. Yeah, yeah, power series related to Taylor's. You got it. It's not really directly related to that. I mean, that's not totally, but. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So if you divide by A1, actually let me just show you this. This is a little bit early, but if you divide by A1, we normally write it like this. dy dx plus uh, p of x y equals uh, q of x. If I remember the way this book does it, we'll see. So if I divide by A1 of x, this of course just becomes a function of x, right? So we just call it q of x, why not? a0 divided by a1 is itself another function of x, so we just call it p of x. That's, that's divided by a1? Yeah, if I divide by a1 of x, I go here. Now obviously that's assuming that a1 of x is not 0 on any interval that I'm looking at, right? Now, something that's really easy to lose track of if the question doesn't ask you to look at it or you kind of forget about it. The solution to an ordinary differential <laughs> equation, what's in that bottle? The solution to any ODE has to include family or families of functions like we saw earlier, but also the interval on which it works, the interval on which it's defined, right? Uh, this is called the interval of definition. It's called the interval of solution. It's called all kinds of shit. Domain of the solution, interval of validity, gauntlet of power. No, that's what you're um, oh, we're almost making it to there. So the interval of solution. How much do I want to write down? I want to write the whole definition for you. You're going to see this a lot. You're going to see this simple. Uh, You can actually call it phi. 
and not fun. Yeah. And it, uh, some function defined on some interval i that has at least n derivatives. Continuous on I. Oh, God. This is in the book. I don't want to write all this shit down. When you sub it, that works in the ODE. So when you sub it into the ODE, it makes it an identity. It works when you plug it into the ODE. Right? So it works when subbed in. Works in the ODE. Maybe that works in the ODE. This has at least what? Has at least N derivatives. That works in an n. Let me say this in an nth order ODE. So now you see why I need n derivatives. Yeah. So it's got to be defined on I. All the derivatives of it, all n derivatives of it that match the nth order ODE that it works in, has to be continuous on I. I like it. Uh, blah blah blah. That means that phi is a solution on I to the OD. So this is just more terminology? Pretty much. I mean, really, if you think about what this is saying is, your answer better exist at the Within places, the right? It's got to exist somewhere. It's got to exist on some interval I. So this interval is going to be a part of the answer you get. And it's got to be, so it's got to be continuous on I. So oh, if your answer true. was... Uh, 1 over the absolute value y. Well, if there's no solution, then it's not continuous. Hmm? It's, it's got to be continuous or you don't get a solution. No, 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 no. So you could get an answer that works here and here. But it's got to be one or the other, right? Yeah. You can't say it, it you know, does that? Yeah. So, so the function, well, let's just say 1 over y, not absolute value. The function 1 over y looks like this. Its domain is everything except 0. Right there, so it is zero, you and you went about. Um, but the answer to the ODE, it really depends on which part you need to look at. It's going to be this or that. Either one of those could be the I. So, so how do I tell which one it is? Well, it depends on if there's some uh, initial value given. So it's maybe it's supposed to go through a certain point that's over here. Well, then guess what? It's This is the interval you're talking about, zero to infinity. Right? So that's going to be... More important when we get to what's called IVPs, inter, uh, initial value problems. Right? And the thing that's used most in physics is BVPs. It sounds like a condition. <laughs> what you got? The BVPs, man. <laughs> All right, let me see. Was there more? Oh, that's that's the next thing to talk about is IVP. Good, that's perfect. Uh, I think that's a decent place to stop. This is, we just barely, we, we almost finished 1-1, one, one, it looks like, from what I've got on my notes. Yes. Cool. So get into 1-1 one, one homework. Try to start reading 1-2. Yeah, it's not late until after the test, but when do you want to turn it in? By a week from today, that means you're on track. Whenever I feel like it. Well, you can always try that one, too. That's what they did in the last circuit, almost all the homework.